Hello and welcome! This is OP1 and OP1 Field. In this video, we're going to give a general overview of these devices including a brief history, their physical properties, and their features in general. First, in terms of nomenclature, unique features of each device will be specified with the designations Original or Field, and for common features we'll simply use OP1. OP1 is a digital synthesizer, drum machine, sampler, effects unit, as well as a 4-track audio recorder and a host of other features. It has a built-in radio that can be sampled. It can be a MIDI controller as well as a sound module and an audio interface. We'll be exploring these features throughout this video series. OP1 was first introduced by the Stockholm-based company Teenage Engineering at the NAMM show in 2010 and officially released in 2011. Its design was influenced by Casio's VL1 synthesizer as well as Casio's SK1 sampler. These devices not only influenced some of OP1's features, but a retro nostalgia was embedded into its design and interface. Roughly 10 years after its initial debut, TE released an updated version called OP1 Field, which improved most features while retaining the original design intent. OP1 is a fully standalone music workstation. You can make a song from start to finish using just this device. It can be a sketchpad for musical ideas, but it is also powerful enough to create highly polished songs. One of the most important concepts to know about OP1 is that it is based on an analog approach to recording audio. This is fundamental to the workflow of the device, so let's briefly dive into this. Multi-track recording techniques were invented by Les Paul in the 1940s. Yes, the same Les Paul who also invented the solid body electric guitar. Magnetic tape was used to record and playback audio in this process. Depending on the recording device, a tape could have between 2 and 48 tracks. OP1's 4-track tape recorder is based on the technology and recording concepts that Les Paul developed several decades ago. Though the concept is analog, OP1 achieves this digitally. The main takeaways are that OP1 has 4 independent audio tracks based on an analog tape recording system. Like tape, recording is done in real time, tape can be cut and spliced, and there's no ability to undo. Here's a quick list of notable users of the original OP1. OP1 Field has 100 new features and improvements from the original, notably a complete stereo signal path with improved processing, more storage, more battery life, an updated display and graphics, multiple tape modes, and more. Internally, OP1 has an FM radio, which is one of the input sources along with the line level input, built in mic, and USB audio. There is an accelerometer inside which can be used for motion control over effects. Both devices have a lithium ion battery. The original is capable of 16 hours of continuous use. With Field, the FM radio can now transmit as well as receive. Battery life has been improved to 24 hours of use, and it has more storage available. Last but not least, Field features a complete stereo signal path including stereo synth engines, effects, tape tracks, and 32-bit audio processing. Oh, and it has Bluetooth LE for MIDI connectivity. The original has a cast aluminum body, four rubber feet, two threaded inserts for mounting, and braille to describe the I.O., which is a nice touch. Field has a nicely machined aluminum body that resembles many Apple devices and features two Velcro pads on the bottom for attachment, similar to a guitar pedal. Their size and weight are nearly identical. OP1's connections are on the right side of the unit. On the original, we have a power on-off switch, a USB mini Type-B for charging, MIDI, USB audio, and transferring files. Next, there's an 8th inch TRS line level audio input. And finally, an 8th inch TRS headphone output that can also be a line level output. On field, there's an updated power switch, USB-C, an 8th inch TRS line level audio input, and an 8th inch TRS headphone output that can also be a line level output. Note, Field also has a built-in feature on the power switch to prevent accidentally turning off the device. Let's see how that works. Press and hold Shift and then press the metronome button. This brings up the settings menu. Use the blue encoder to navigate to the system menu. Next, use the ochre encoder to navigate to the power off setting. Use the orange encoder to switch this setting from instant to delayed. Now, if we flip the power switch, we get a warning screen with a countdown timer. Press the COM button to instantly power off the device. Or we can cancel it by flipping the power switch back on. Press the metronome button to exit the menu. A quick side note about the user interface. OP1 uses a nested menu system that is color-coded to the encoders throughout the graphic interface. More on this later. Another note, OP1 saves automatically. There's no need to save as you go. Your work and settings are saved in real time. Another important note, OP1 doesn't have an undo button. Keep that in mind when you're changing settings and recording into tape mode. 
On top of OP1, there's several buttons, encoders, and a display to interface with. Here's an overlay for reference. Now let's walk through everything in detail. The original features a basic onboard speaker, a built-in microphone, six LEDs on the right side, which are used for volume level and battery level feedback. On field, speaker has been dramatically improved and there are additional slots on the side and holes on the bottom to aid the new speaker. The built-in microphone and LED lights have also been updated. On the top left, there is a volume knob. Top right, there are four endless encoders, which are multifunctional depending on the mode of the device. On field, in certain cases, the encoders can be pressed in for additional features. They both also feature an OLED display, which is a window into the heart of the machine. On field, the display was improved, brought up flush to the surface, and placed behind hardened glass. You can also adjust the brightness of the display on this unit. The graphics on field were also improved. OP1 has 54 buttons which are rated for millions of presses per switch. Let's describe each of them, starting from the top left. The help button is below the volume knob and has several uses. It can be used to display information about OP1's battery level. Press and hold help and the LEDs on the right will display the current battery level. In synth and drum mode, pressing help will display the current preset name. Pressing and holding shift and pressing any other button will tell you what that button is. On field, press and hold shift and then press help to bring up a quick start guide. Use the T buttons and the orange encoder to navigate the guide. Press a mode button to exit the guide. To the right of help is the tempo button. Here we see settings related to tape mode, the sequencers, and MIDI. Use the blue encoder to adjust the BPM. On field, tapping this button can set the tempo. Press a mode button to exit the screen. Below the speaker, we have the four mode buttons. From left to right, there's synth, drum, tape, and mixer. OP1 has four primary modes, synthesizer, drum machine, tape recorder, and mixer. Use the four mode buttons to switch between different modes. In synth mode, for example, when we play notes on the keyboard, it will play the current synth preset. Use the left and right arrow buttons to decrease and increase octaves. If we switch to drum mode, the keys will correspond to the current drum kit. The arrow buttons then change the pitch of the samples. When you switch to tape mode, the keys will play either synth or drum mode, whichever was last selected. Another key concept to know is how sound is generated in synth versus drum modes. In synth mode, sound is synthesized in one of the built-in synth engines. Each synth engine has a different design and unique character. The one exception to this is the sampler engine, which uses an audio file to generate sound which it distributes across the keys. In drum mode, there's a similar concept where an audio file is distributed across the keys. But what's unique about OP1 is that it uses a single audio file that is automatically chopped non-destructively and spread across the keys. Below the mode buttons are three tape editing buttons, lift, drop, and split. Below those, we have transport buttons for tape mode, record, play, and stop. Below those, the arrow keys change depending on the mode. In tape mode, they will rewind and fast forward the tape. In synth mode, they transpose octaves. In drum mode, they transpose the pitch of samples. The shift button is a modifier to access additional settings and commands. Below the display are four T buttons, which change depending on the current mode. In tape mode, use these to switch between the four tracks. In synth and drum modes, use these to switch between the current engine, envelope, effect, and LFO. To the right of those are eight preset buttons. Those two change depending on the current mode. In synth and drum modes, these can be used to store your favorite presets for quick access. In tape mode, these eight buttons have different functions called tape tricks. Here's a quick overlay. On the top right of OP1, we have the input button. Pressing this toggles the current input on or off. Press and hold shift and then press the input button to open the input screen. On the original, use the blue encoder to select the source. There's the built-in mic, radio, USB audio, or resampling OP1's output. Use the white encoder to set the input threshold and the orange encoder to set input gain. Press a mode button to close the screen. This is similar on field, though the graphics and encoder colors are different. Press a mode button or the input button to close the screen. A quick note about recording. You can record directly into the synth sampler engine or into drum mode using one of the input sources. You can also record directly into an audio track in tape mode. Below the input button, we have the COM button. Press this to open the output screen. This screen is slightly different on each device. On the original, we have a record player. The T buttons below the screen are used to record the main output and write it to a virtual record. You can switch between side A or B of the record. On field, we see this plus the FM transmitter settings. Use the blue encoder to switch over to it and the T buttons to broadcast the device and tune the frequency. Press and hold shift and then press the COM button to get to the COM screen. Here, there's various MIDI settings and you can enter disk mode. 
Below the COM button is the sequencer button. Press this to toggle the sequencer on and off. There are multiple sequencers available and each one is different. Press and hold shift and then press the sequencer button to access a list. Use the blue encoder to select a sequencer and press the sequencer button again to close the list. For most of them, pressing a key will play the sequencer. Press the sequencer button again to toggle the sequencer off. Lastly, both devices feature a two-octave keyboard. The original has fixed velocity keys while Field has velocity-sensitive keys, of which the settings can be changed. On Field, press and hold Shift and then press the metronome button. Use the blue encoder to select keyboard. Use the ochre encoder to select velocity. Then use the orange encoder to change the setting. Thanks for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something. Give a like and subscribe if you did. And check out the description for more information.